Sounds right to me. Okay. Get MHD. And we're going to go to monitoring, data logging, and bam. Ethanol content, 21%. We are looking good. Great news, the rewire from my previous video worked, as you can tell by the fact that I am now driving the car. The Motive Flex Fuel Module, which had once been bricking the vehicle, making it drivable, it's all fixed now. As you can also tell by looking in the upper right hand corner, you can see that I have 21% ethanol content. That is right, everything is working perfectly. So a couple more issues have popped up since this all happened. Number one, I am currently running 91 pump gas right now. Pump gas has some amount of ethanol in it. I understand it's probably usually between five Five and 10%, I've not heard of 20%, which seems like a lot, but I have run across four to five different gas stations so far, and each one of them has had around 20% ethanol content showing up on their 91 pump octane. So um, I'm not sure if that's a flex fuel issue or if that is a gas station issue, but I guess we can find out more later. However, there's a much larger issue I ran into. The goal here is of course, to establish a custom tune to do some wide open throttle runs and send them over to my tuner to do a flex fuel tune in that I can run any amount of ethanol and it will essentially extrapolate out the correct air fuel ratio for me. I went to do that first run and do my first data log where I do wide open throttle from 2000 RPM until redline in third gear. However, when I did that, I, which I'm about to do here on the video, you will notice the ethanol content when it gets above about 13 PSI pegs at 100% ethanol. Of course, a gigantic issue. We cannot have that. No matter the ethanol content, it assumes I'm at 100% ethanol. It will always run rich. I don't have nearly enough injector or fuel pump to run that heavy of a mix. And so this needs to be figured out. This time I was smarter about it. I did no diagnosis on my own. I immediately reached out to Motive and asked them what the issue was. They responded to me with the very first question, well, do you happen to run PR coils? I do, so I responded as such, and they immediately said, okay, this is a known issue with PR coils. Once again, super frustrating to me. Why didn't they make this known up front? They know it's an issue, it's the first thing they asked me, and yet I have to inquire about it after my car is not running, after I've installed their product and given them my money for them to tell me about, oh, oops, there's actually something else wrong here. I asked them immediately, is there anything else I can do? They said, no, essentially the PR coils introduce some sort of like variance in the voltage. And so this is an issue for the motive flex fuel module. Anyways, I did not want to replace my PR coils. I don't want to spend $150, $200 when I don't need to, especially on an inferior part. So I went onto Spool Street and did some research. When you're doing the wiring of the motive flex fuel module, there is a green connector with two orange power wires going into it. One of those wires has a clean, power signal. The other one is a dirty power signal. People suggest you should try connecting to the other one, to the one you're not currently connected to. I went ahead and made that switch. The motive flex fuel uh, performed way worse. It was throwing ethanol spikes absolutely everywhere. So obviously that was not my issue. I went back and put it back on the old original power wire. Things went back to normal. The other thing that was suggested was, hey, you might as well try to get the cleanest signal that you can for both power and ground. So I went ahead and I ran a power wire directly from the positive terminal of the battery to the flex fuel module. That changed nothing. I went ahead and ran a ground wire directly from the negative of the battery to the flex fuel module, which well, once again, I'm sure that's probably not the best way to do that, but fix nothing once again. So unfortunately I was in a position that I think I am going to have to go ahead and purchase the new coils and see if it fixes it. Started to install the coils and frankly, when I was in there taking things apart, I, I was just like, I don't understand how this is going to make a difference. I'm pretty skeptical this will fix anything at all. I followed through with it, turned the car on for the first time. Things all looked good still. Actually, I was now running that added about two gallons of E85 to the fuel tank. So I was now running a 30% mix is what I calculated based upon the fact that apparently Northern California gas is already 20%, 91 already starts off at 20%. I added two gallons and actually the equation worked out perfectly. So it, it seems like that really is what's going on. I took it out for its first drive, ran fine, did my first wide open throttle run, kept my eyes pegged on that little phenol content percentage.
already right at 30%. So the issue is actually fixed. Very exciting. So I was very happy about this. Went ahead and set the car up to do a data log. Did my first data log. Huge issue immediately. Actually, two issues here. When I was in the out wide open throttle, the higher RPMs, the rail pressure was dropping to below 1500 PSI, which is obviously not good. You are going to blow something up if you do that. The big issue for the Z4, which is what I drive, is that we do not have a low pressure fuel sensor. There's no low pressure fuel sensor to read from. There's only a, a rail pressure sensor. So you can't figure out, is it a problem with the HPFP or the LPFP? That is unknown. So I'm either going to have to go ahead and just start spending a bunch of money and throw down money for a new low pressure fuel pump. And if that doesn't fix it, throw money into a high pressure fuel pump or vice versa. Or there's something else I'm going to have to do to figure out how to understand what the issue Issue is and where it's coming from. The other problem I ran to, albeit smaller in the short term, is that although the target boost is 18 PSI, it's only making around 14 to 15 PSI. So obviously boost is leaking out somewhere. I'm going to have to diagnose that as well. But anyways, that's the status of where we are at this point. Ethanol, ethanol spikes all figured out. So that's great. Hopefully this video helps you figure that out for yourself if you're having to diagnose and try to fix this. Otherwise, I will get back to you very soon with a new video. I've already got some ideas kind of perk leading around up in the old cranium so i'll run those by you guys in the future when i eventually implement them anyways thanks for watching hopefully this is helpful for you have a good one